The next section about set equality basically entirely runs on something that came up kind of in passing a little bit earlier, which is the idea of De Morgan's laws and specifically this one right here, the one that's on top. Um, that one ends up being really, really useful and our book and therefore the Newton notes that go along with it really stress that one. Um, the other one, really, if you're going to write out De Morgan's Laws, I kind of think they should be in tandem where you get the other one too. Um, the other one doesn't come up quite as much, but still sometimes makes the problem a little bit simpler. And after all, that's the whole point of using De Morgan's Laws is to try to simplify things if you can, right? That's where they become helpful. So you can see it right here, this thing that we're supposed to find, it's the first De Morgan's Law up toward the top. So if that's our universal set, that's A and that's B, and we want to find the union of A complement and B complement, there are a few ways that you can do this. And clearly, since De Morgan's Laws is right in front of this, then you would think, well, that's what we're going to do here. Um, that's the first way I'm going to do it. I've left a whole bunch of room so I could do it a couple of different ways. But yes, I would absolutely use De Morgan's Law here because what you end up with is that A complement union B complement would be equal to A intersect B complement. So what I would do is just figure out what A intersect B is and then take the complement of that using the universal set and then basically you're done. So if we were gonna do that, then we'd have to figure out what A intersect B is. But if you look at where A and B are, um, looks like they're the same size. So we could just kind of go through either one or the other and check it against the other set. So I guess starting with A, negative one, that's not in B. Three is, so we can put that in there. So three's in there. Eight's not, 11 is, and 16's not. So the intersection should just be three and 11. So then A intersect B complement, which is the thing that we're ultimately supposed to find. If we just kind of go through the universal set, leave out three and 11, that will do it. So negative four, negative one, zero, one half, two, three is actually in there, eight, 11 is in there, so we're gonna leave that one out, and then 13 and 16, and there we go. So yes, I think you would wanna use De Morgan's Law here because it makes that question that short. Um, there are other ways that you could do it, so I guess someone will say, or if you prefer, you could, I guess, figure out what A complement and B complement are individually and then just get the union from there. So I guess in theory, that would be the more direct way of doing it, but it would also be longer. So there is that, um, but we could do it. So A complement, um, so just looking at what A is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five elements in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the universal set. So it looks like A complement should have five things. I just want to know that so I can double check and make sure I don't miss anything. All right, negative four, that's not an A, but negative one is, zero is not. One half is not. I guess the one half is really easy to catch, right? Because it's so much taller than the other numbers. Two is not, so we need that one. Three's in there, eight's in there, eleven's in there, thirteen's not. All right, so that's A complement. And then B complement, I guess I can write it over here. So same kind of thing. It looks like there are five elements in there. Um, the two negatives are not in B, so we can get those in there right away. Zero and a half and two and three are all in there, but eight is not, 11 is in B, um, but then 13 and 16 are not. And then we would want the union of these, so A complement, union, B complement, and then we're basically just doing a regular old union. I'm going to put them in order, although you wouldn't really have to as long as you got the right elements. So you need the two negatives, you need zero, you would need the one half, um, and then the two, then the eight, and the 13, and the 16, and then that way this looks exactly like this answer up here, which is the thing that I'm kind of shooting for. Um, so that's another way to do it. The third way, I guess you could do it with a Venn diagram and the homework 
kind of phrases it that way where it says like use De Morgan's Law and a Venn diagram to do this. You don't really need to do both. If you're using De Morgan's Law, I would argue that the Venn diagram, at least when it's just a two set one like this, it kind of becomes redundant. If it was a three set one and you had a lot going on, then yeah, I would probably use it. But for two sets, I mean, if you're gonna do this, um, basically you just end up making a picture of De Morgan's Law. So then it's like, well, you could just do De Morgan's Law and that would be a little bit faster. So there's nothing wrong with, with doing the Venn diagram. It just, I think, kind of stretches things out. So if we were gonna do that, so I think I've got enough space here to draw this. Oh yeah, I do, because it's only two sets. If it was three sets, I might be in trouble. But two sets, that's all right. So there's A, and there's B. All right. So we already know what the intersection is. If I scroll back up, the intersection of A and B is 3 and 11. So those in the Venn diagram are going to be in the overlap, right? So they're going to be right in the middle. So 3 and 11. Then the other elements of A are negative 1, 8, and 16. So I need those in there. So negative 1, 8, 16. And then doing the same thing with B, I need a 0, I need a 1 half, and I need a 2. Um, however, there are a couple of other numbers that don't show up in there. Um, so if I go back up, the negative 4 is not in there yet, and neither is 13. So somewhere inside the rectangle, but outside the two circles, right? So negative four, and then I guess I got room down here, so I'll put the 13 there. Um, so you would have that for the Venn diagram. And so then um, A complement would be everything outside the A circle. So, right, like zero, one half, two, and then the, the 13 and the negative four. And then B complements everything outside the B circle. So these three that are in A but not in B, the negative one, eight, and 16, and then the negative four and the 13. Um, I actually think this is harder to keep track of with the Venn diagram. Um, like it's, it's good to be able to make one, but I think for the kind of question that's being asked here, you're better off just using De Morgan's Law. Like to me, that feels like there's less stuff going on. And so it feels a little more streamlined. Um, but I guess if you're more oriented toward having pictures, then maybe this feels more streamlined, right? I mean, that's, that seems very reasonable. Um, but any of these three options would work, but I would go with De Morgan's Law if, you know, personally, I would go with De Morgan's Law. All right, the second one, <clears throat> okay, this is another De Morgan's Law, right? Complement, union, other complement. So it looks like we're gonna do the same thing. And that is absolutely true. So that's what I would do here. In this one, I'm just gonna use De Morgan's Law. This is a little bit different. Um, you could use De Morgan's Law there, but I actually think the picture might be more helpful that time. So we'll get there when we get there though. So S complement, union, T complement. Again, use De Morgan's Law and say that's S intersect T complement. So then we have to figure out what S intersect T is. And if you look at S and look at T, it looks like they're the same size again. So I guess we'll start with S and see what also shows up in T. A, no, B, no, F, no, H, no, K, yes, and M, yes. All right, I guess that's what it is. So S intersect T would be the set consisting of K and M. All right, well then, S intersect T complement would then be everything else in the universal set besides K and M. So A, B, E, F, G, H, not K and M, P, R. Okay, so yeah, that would do it. Um, then to get this one, the intersection of the two complements, um, in a way, that would be easier with a picture. Um, at least I would kind of want the picture as a prop. So I'll make one. All right. S circle, T circle, and universal set. All right. Intersection we know is K and M, 
all right? And then the other elements of S are A, B, F, and H. And then the other elements of T are E, G, P, and R. But then if you go and look at the universal set and count up the elements, there are 10 of them. And if you look at this here, you go, know, there's four here, two in the overlap, and four here. Four plus two plus four is 10, so we got everything. There's nothing that's gonna be inside the universal set rectangle that's outside these circles, right? Everything's already on there. Okay, well then the thing that we're supposed to find is S complement intersect T complement. So S complement would be everything outside the S circle, so it's these four that are in the T circle. Um, the T complement would be everything outside the T circle, so it's these four over here, the A, B, F, and H. Um, so if you look at those and we're supposed to take the intersection of those, like there's no overlap there, right? Um, you have stuff that's in S but not in T and you have stuff that's in T but not in S, right? That's not gonna overlap. Um, if you wanted to use De Morgan's Law, I guess you would rewrite this as S union T complement. And if you think about what that would be graphically, it would be just stuff that's inside the rectangle but outside both circles. Right, because S union T is everything that shows up in either circle or both. So the complement of that would be, at least in the picture, the stuff in the universal set rectangle that's outside the two circles and there's nothing. So that would be the empty set. I guess, or if you prefer the other notation, brackets with nothing in between also would mean empty set. Um, but you can tell, right? Even if you just look at like, okay, T complements these four, S complements these four, yeah, there's no overlap, right? It's two, like the part that's S only, and then the part that's T only, there's nothing that's gonna overlap there um, at all, right? Um, and the only way to get anything in the intersection would be to have something in the rectangle that's outside the two circles, and we don't have that. Um, and I guess if you wanted to do it, so by writing everything out, S complement, so it's the stuff that's in T but not in the overlap, so it's E, G, P, and R. So just to actually go through and write this out, I think that's useful, or at least helpful a little bit. Um, T complement would be the elements that are in S but not in the overlap, so A, B, F, and H. And if you look at those, there's nothing that shows up in both, right? You could just pick one and check it against the other. E, that's not down there. Neither is G, neither is P, neither is R. So S complement intersect. T complement is the empty set, which we already know we're supposed to get that. All right. Um, number three, there are a bunch of these that show up in, um, in the homework, like a bunch of questions like this, where um, you have the, the intersections uh, that are visible in the Venn diagram and they're um, they're labeled with the Roman numerals. And I guess so are the regions where there's no intersection, right? Like one is A only and three is B only, that kind of thing. Um, and that picture actually turned out better than I thought it would. So that's a nice little surprise for me. Um, all right, so if we're gonna figure these out, so like which regions does the complement of A intersect B include? Uh, there are a couple of ways that you could do it. I mean, I guess you could just read it directly off the picture where if you go well, A intersect B is this football shape right here, right? It's um, the overlap between A and B. Um, so if you just say, well, it's everything except for that football shape. So one, five, three, four, seven, or three, six, seven, rather, um, the I is on the other side. So that would work. Um, I kind of like writing everything out. So I guess you don't have to do this part but it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm not gonna miss things. So like I would say, all right, A intersect B. Um, so here's the A and B overlap, the two and the four. So two and four. And so then A intersect B complement would have to be everything else. And I just labeled these one through seven. So it's not like they're missing Roman numerals or anything. Um, I guess you could check it if you want to, but it's gonna be one, three, five, six, and seven. And I mean, you could see it if you just said, well, I'm gonna leave this piece out and just say one, five, three, six, seven. You'd get the same ones, just in a slightly different order. Um, 
B, which regions does A union C complement include? All right, well, A union C would be anything that's either in A or in C. So it would take up these four, right? They're all in A, so one, two, four, and five. And then C consists of five, four, six, and seven, right? So it's all this stuff here. The only thing that's neither in A nor C is the three, right? And maybe to get this one, it's actually easier to use uh, or just to see it in a way using De Morgan's law in the opposite direction. So A union C complement, we could say that that's A complement intersect C complement. So that means things that are not in A and not in C. The only one that's gonna work is the three. Um, and I guess you could do it the longer way if you wanted to. So it is really just three, but if you wanted to do it the way that I did A, you could, right? You'd have A union C, which would be, I guess just for A, one, two, four, and five, and then adding in a couple that are in C, which would be six and seven. And so then from there, you'd say, well, then what's missing? Like what's not in that list? And the only thing that's not in that list is three. So you would get the right thing, right? Because then A union C complement, you're saying, okay, well, which Roman numeral is not in A union C? And it's just three. So that's it. Um, so I guess either way would work, right? Either, either approach. Um, part C, to figure out if A intersect B union C is equal to A intersect B union A intersect C. All right, so basically we just kind of have to check. Um, and let's see, we know what A is, right? It's one, two, four, and five. So, so A, one, two, four, five. And then B union C, if we go up here, so everything in B or C, um, that's everything except for one, right? Because two, three, four, and six are in B, and then um, five and seven are in C, along with these two that are in the overlap. So it's everything except for one. So I guess we can just write them in order then, if we know it's everything except for one. So two, three, four, five, six and seven okay i almost tried to make that an eight again i don't know why i want to make an eight um, but knowing that then we want the intersection of these two let's see what shows up in both of them i guess starting from the smaller one one that's an a but it's not over here two yep four yep five yep so it looks like what we're gonna get is that a intersect B union C would consist of two, four, five. All right, then the other one where we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. So I guess I'll kind of section this off. Um, so we'll have to get those two that are in parentheses first, but A intersect B, if we go up and look, so it's just that football shape right here, that's two and four. All right, so that's just two and four. And then A intersect C, that's this football over here, right? The overlap between the A and C circles. That's four and five. All right, and then the thing that we're supposed to get is A intersect B union a intersect C. And if we take the union of those two, we go, all right, well, that's two, that's four, and that's five, right? That's, that's it. Since two and four are in A intersect B, and then if we add in whatever's in here, the only new thing we get is five. So then in both of them, we got two, four, and five. Okay, good. Then yes, they're equal. So say yes. they are equal and then i found a place to use a semicolon correctly all right so two four and five 
All right, so that one actually worked. Um, and considering that D kind of looks like the same sort of question as C, and if you're thinking if one works, maybe the other one's not going to work, well, I guess we'll find out. There is one thing in D that I think is very noticeable, or at least it's worth noticing. I hope it's noticeable. B union C intersect A would be the same thing as A intersect B union C, which is the first part of the last one, so we already know what it is. So um, I kind of did this on purpose because this will show up every once in a while where you can kind of recycle work that you've already done um, on a previous part of the problem, right? We already know what it is, so there's no reason to go through and, and redo it, um, right? I mean, you can, but I would rather just say, we already have it. So we're just going to use that, right? So we're, we're going to work this a little bit since we've already got it. And we know that this is going to be 2, 4, 5, right? We've already got that. Um, and then the other thing is that we need to get A intersect B intersect C. Okay. So I guess for that one, we've got that A, um, and A is right here. So I'm just going to copy it over that it's 1 two, four, and five, and then B intersect C. Um, let's see, I guess we're gonna have to go up and get it. But B intersect C is over here, right? So it's four and five, oh, four and six, rather. Um, okay. So B intersect C is four and six. All right, so then that would mean that a intersect B intersect C would just be four, it looks like, right? Another way to do this, and this is actually, it's a little bit of a shortcut. When it's nothing but intersections, it doesn't actually matter where the parentheses go. So you could just look right at the triple intersection and go, it's gotta be that. Because where would A, B, and C all intersect? Right in the middle. Right, and that's where the four is, and that's the only thing there. So you could do it like that too, um, but these aren't the same, right? So what we're ending up with um, down at the end here, I guess it would be no. Um, what's going on is that B union C intersect A is not equal to A intersect B intersect C, right? Because this one had four, um, the A intersect B intersect C, that triple intersection. But the first one had four along with two and five, right? So those clearly aren't the same thing, right? One of them's got two more elements than the other one, or two more regions, right? They're regions, not elements. Um, but there are a whole bunch of questions that are like this um, in the homework. Like there are a handful of them when I went through and checked. So. Um, this idea of when you start off with this picture where you have the Roman numerals labeling the different parts of the Venn diagram um, and then kind of figuring stuff out based on that picture, there is a decent amount of that on this homework assignment.